Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. And it is my distinguished honor to let you guys know that the guest today is a returning guest. And usually when someone returns a second time, it's because the first time they brought something that was of help, deep encouragement. And I just want to say, I want to take a moment to honor this person. He's not only my friend or my brother in the Lord, but it's my pastor. Pastor Stephen has been a remarkable friend, a remarkable pastor to me in recent months, not recent years, in recent months. I've had conversations with this man that after I've left the conversation, I've left really thanking God for the fact that this man has spoke wisdom from above. He is anointed of God. He, ha he Every time he speaks, there is a weight to what he speaks about and how he delivers it. And Pastor Stephen, I want to let you know that I am incredibly encouraged by the fact that you have come on tonight. You are a man where your your schedule is incredibly busy. Your time is is very demanding with different aspects of life. But I also want you to know that you are a deep encouragement to me in recent months. And I want to thank you for leading by example. You're so welcome on this podcast. Okay, thank you very much. It's it's very kind of you. And it's it's I love being on here. I love what you're doing. And I'm glad I've encouraged you, but I have to say you've encouraged me immensely. And, and just to see to see what the Lord's doing in your life and, and the way that you you intentionally uh, set your 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 direction to honor in the Lord with, with your testimony, with your gifts, with your your spoken words, um, you know, with these podcasts and and. You know, I, I love it. I love it. The way the way you structure your life is mm. deliberate and, and purposeful to, to towards honor and God and being a worship unto him. So oh well done. Yeah. Well done. And, th and thank you for being a blessing to not just me, my family as well. You've you've blessed my kids, you've encouraged my kids in, in youth ministry. So yeah. um, so much appreciated, brother. You're so welcome. And it's good to be on here tonight with you. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I enjoy talking to you. So this is just another one of those conversations. The only difference is it's being recorded and people get to hear our conversation. Pastor Steve, the, I suppose the the title or the topic of tonight's episode will be before slash after the ring. So it's on the topic that everyone seems to enjoy, dating, engagement, marriage and stuff. And I suppose to kick things off, you're a married man who has kids, wonderful kids, in fact, who I, I'm so thankful that I get to in some way pour into their life. Ronan is a very dear friend of mine and he has been for the last number of years. But there was a time where you weren't married. You didn't have kids. You were, as they say, a single Pringle. And I suppose, could you share with us how you met your wife? Um, I suppose in, in a brief sense. Sure. Sure. Well, I can, I can tell you two stories. Okay. I can tell yeah. you and you can guess which one's true and which one's not. What, what about that? Uh, I love this, it. This, <laughs> this is, this is, this is what I tell my kids uh, that um, after I became a Christian, I got involved in a Christian band and we were going around and, and we were playing different places and, 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 you know, just singing Christian songs and encouraging young people wherever we could. And, yeah. and Wilma, who's my wife's name, she came along to some of our concerts and uh, she one day came up and asked for an autograph and uh, as, as some people did and, and so she came up and, and she, she gave me this piece of paper and I signed it and I didn't realise but it was a wedding certificate and that was how I got married to Wilma okay that's the story I tell my kids okay, <laughs> okay. So, is that true? Is it that, that uh, there's a, an alternative version where I was uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was involved in, in ministry, you know, in the church, and you know, busy with the things of God. And but I did realize that um, there was there was a need in my life. You yeah. know, I felt I felt the loneliness. Of, of being single, even though I was busy and at, at friends, you know, I remember, I remember leading worship and uh, I remember one particular night, it was a conference and I was leading worship at a conference and coming away from the platform and walking outside and, and, and feeling real blessing of God, but feeling loneliness, mm. you know, real, real loneliness. And, um, and I remember 
you know, shortly after that, meeting Wilma, we'd, we'd grown up in the same part of the country. We, we yeah. grew up in Donegal. Uh, we went to the same schools, actually, but never, never interacted. Wow. And she she had started coming to, to some of the youth work that we were doing. And um, I, I met her and always enjoyed the conversations with her. Um, and so I asked her out and she said, no and oh. yeah so um, I struggled with that and had to wait a while longer and I asked her out again and she said no oh. and so yeah, yeah <laughs> this is true and we, we went on and um, I, I suppose she was still coming to the church and, and friendship grew and I asked her out one more time and she said yes Oh. That, that was it. So you know, um, it was part of the journey. I, I sometimes give her a hard time and say that she was hard-hearted, mm. and wasn't listening to the Lord, you know, and should have said yes earlier. But I, I think she had got it right, and I wasn't ready. Yeah, uh, for a relationship, maybe she wasn't either. But God had His time and was it. But um, I just uh, fell for her pretty hard, as you mm. can tell. So that might be the true story. You yeah. Know, choose. <laughs> um. Yeah. I suppose so. With the two stories you've said, I, I partially I believe the first one because I knew you were a part of a band because I think I seen a picture of you when you had long. Was it right, long hair? There was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah back in so, the day when there was hair at all, you know, <laughs> there was a time it was long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the whole rock music scene and and when i became a christian i wanted to to use music you know for the lord you use that that rock music and so i i learned electric guitar and and yeah enjoyed that for a while and god god used that in my life teach me many things Mm. including taking me into worship ultimately yeah Yeah. but i i would have to say I believe the second story because of how you shared it. Absolutely, yeah. It, it <laughs> You're a discerning uh, man, Jerry. You're a discerning man. <laughs> thank you. Wow. Yeah. No, but I, I love how you shared it as well because there's so much honesty with it, Pastor Steve. And and with this topic of dating engagement, you know, it's it's a massive topic to cover. But I, I know from myself from experience that you know we know the Bible talks about he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But there's a process or I suppose a stage to finding that woman or that man that you will potentially marry. And a lot of times we can disqualify ourselves from that place of approaching someone to ask him out because we're not sure how to navigate it or we overthink things in our mind so much. And it becomes quite a difficult thing for people to even get a start on because we're not sure where to start because we're, not even sure how to approach it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It can be a difficult area. Mm. And I think one of the things that maybe doesn't help is that sometimes it seems like there's just a small group of people to, to choose from. And, yeah. Um, and if you, if you make mistakes in some way, that you'll have to live with those mistakes in yeah. that small group of people. Mm. So you do have to be a little bit careful in, in, in how you how you approach this and, yeah. and how you approach uh, potential, potential uh, I suppose, partners, but potential deities, if you want to put it like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think we should maybe demystify a little bit what, what, what we're actually doing yeah. when we're dating and... and then we could talk maybe a little bit about maybe approaching it. Yeah. That, that might be a good way to, um, I, I think, to de- demystify it a little bit. Yes, there has to be that that spark of attraction, you know, in, yeah. in some way. Now, um, I, I know so for some people, they get that spark straight away when, when they approach somebody. But I would encourage people not to, uh, not to rule something out. Mm. too quickly because sometimes a spark happens after a few conversations yeah you know because a lot of the attraction i think 
possibly, possibly, um, maybe for girls, you know, they, um, that the the attraction can be more from conversations, from the way, uh, the the, the guy interacts with her, and maybe makes her laugh, and yeah. uh, cares for her, and and so I would encourage girls not to. Uh, there, there, there needs to be that spark, and if the spark doesn't come, then it's not happening. You yeah, know? but but right. but give it a chance. Give it a chance. So so don't uh, don't be too quick to rule somebody in or rule somebody out. You know, get, oh. get, give it a bit of a chance. Yeah. Um, what what you're trying to do when you're dating, I think there's there's three or four important questions that that you're trying to figure out during dating and and i would say the first one is are your strengths compatible are are the the strong points in your lives are they compatible with each other uh for a future together i I don't want to explore any of these too long uh, but uh just to keep the, the conversation moving i would say then the next question you'd want to ask is are your weaknesses compatible because Mm -hmm. You know, it is nice if you find that your weakness is compensated a little bit by the strength of the person you're dating, and so, yeah. uh, and and actually that your weaknesses don't compound each other. Mm. If you know, if you have the same set of weaknesses, then then you can drag each other yeah. into those weaknesses, and 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 it doesn't really help. So. Um, anyway, you, you want to figure those out. Are your strengths compatible? Are your weaknesses compatible? And then, is there a combined future together? Mm. Yeah. So I, I think, I think, you know, a combined future, which um, you know, there's a there's a lot of questions you can ask about that. You yeah. know, and, and, and maybe some of our conversation will delve into that a little bit. Uh, but those are, are kind of the three three big questions you want to be asking. Yeah. So, so to move ahead a little bit, then whenever you actually want to, uh, you want to initiate a a, a date, um, mm. I would say coffee is one of your best friends. You yeah. know, and it, <laughs> if you don't drink coffee, start drinking coffee. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a brilliant thing. You know, yeah. so it's it's a great excuse to to get a conversation with somebody. Um, and, and it's. It's actually when, whenever I was dating, we didn't have so many coffee shops yeah. like that, that that you have now, and mm. it's a great opportunity. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I would, I would, I would encourage people to to try and keep very relaxed. Sure. You know, try, you know, just take take it. You know, whatever you need to do to. To keep it relaxed, don't get too intense. Don't go for the the big high flying date, you know, yeah. and lining everything up and limousines and all. Keep keep it relaxed. Yeah. In fact, even try and try and just make it a conversation, you know, without even officially calling it a date. So so that there just as this this relaxed uh, environment, the pressure's off, and and you can just enjoy a conversation. Yeah. together and, and 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 start off like that so um and, and be prepared and and that that they be prepared to talk about yourself right. you know and some people don't like to talk about themselves and some people love to talk about themselves <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> you know how it is and and you want to get a balance of both so try and be that yeah. you know try and Really take an interest in the other person without without interrogation, <laughs> you know, and and give the other person an opportunity just to talk about themselves, and then be prepared to to talk about yourself as well. Yeah, trying to keep it as relaxed as possible. Yeah, I love that because it's the first step is always the hardest passes, Steve, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying it from experience because I'm a single guy and obviously there's, you know, you have to put yourself out there and, and for a lot of people that can be difficult maybe because of past experiences or whatever. But then it's like, 
then I think there's, there can be, an, unfortunately, there can be, a, I suppose, outside pressure as well from people meaning well and they're, they're almost like your relationship guru trying to set you up with your options of, of who's available, who's not available and who's interested in you, blah, 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 I suppose. And there can be a lot of awkwardness around it, do you know, and, and how obviously because we're Christians, so we're well involved in the church. How in a ch the church setting can we make dating or when we see two people talking opposite sex, how can they make it less awkward? If that Does that make sense? It's a great question, Jerry. It's a great yeah. question. And a bit of it goes back to um, very often you, you don't want to become that person who is just chasing every girl or the girl that's yeah. chasing every guy. And, and, right. and once you get that, that name, then people, people struggle, will struggle with you because of that. Yeah. And that, that just makes it difficult. So um, I did, I did think about this when, whenever you, you asked me to talk about this. And, and, and I think that this, this is where faith really comes into it. You know, yeah. we have to, uh, 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 I'm not. I'm not available anymore. But, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I'm a married man. But but I suppose it's a, it's a it's a it's a good approach for life. We are not to be desperate. Yes. You know, we're 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 not to panic. We are called, I suppose, to to have a confidence. Why? Because we live by faith. Yeah. You know. So therefore, you know, when it comes to dating or really anything in life. We're we're not desperately looking for something. Yeah. We're we're not. Uh, we we have every reason to believe that. Um, well, a number of things that we have real value. Yeah. Um, and that we have something to offer. Why? Because God is with us. Yeah. You know, and, and God is in us. Uh, I suppose. Uh, I guess I'm speaking to Christians tonight, and. If anybody's listening who's not a Christian, I encourage you to 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 give your heart to the Lord and find yeah. that real value. That's right. And and what that does, it also it also gives value to the person that you're dating as well. Um so so that's gonna help. If 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 that issue of of not being desperate and ha having faith and having a confidence, being confident, um that, that God is with us, God is bringing us somewhere, God has the right person and yeah. the right time, then then that changes our approach. Yeah. And, and that's really important. It's really important. Um, I, and, and saying that, you know, I, I said a little earlier about the loneliness. I get mm. that. Yeah. I get that. The loneliness um, and the real, the real deep desire that's, that's built into us um, because this is God's plan, is, it, is that, uh, that that a man will find a woman and a woman will find a man and that yeah. there's uh, company and there's companionship and fellowship and, and love. Yeah. Um, and it's a great plan, that that's, that's God's plan from the beginning. Um, so, so the loneliness is a real thing and needs to be acknowledged and yeah. needs, to be, needs to be dealt with in the right way. And for a period of time, I, I think in everybody's life, and I had to deal with this too, you have to deal with that loneliness righteously. Yeah. You know, you have to bring it to God and have him in a very real way help you with that. Yeah. And what, what can happen there is that you actually find a companionship in the Lord and you find a friendship in the Lord that actually it lifts the desperation right off. Yeah. You know, and lifts that look away from you. That's right. And you know what it does? It, it replaces it. It replaces that look of desperation yeah. and that feeling of desperation and, and loneliness. It, it, it replaces it with a, 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 like a quiet confidence yeah. that actually is attractive. Mm. You know, this person is not needing me and you know, whenever somebody observes a person who is, you know, full of faith and, and has that confidence, this person is not me. That's attractive. Yeah. That's yeah. attractive. You know, this, this person is about the things of God too and, 
and reflects the Lord, that's attractive. Yeah. To any genuine person and Christian, there's something about that. Yeah. That 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 draws people. So, um, so dealing with loneliness righteously is very important. Very important. Um, uh, you know, and then realizing your value in the Lord to to, to things that it just needs to be built into us. Yeah. And actually, you know, if if you don't build those areas of of your life, then probably not prepared for a relationship anyway you yeah know, you're you're going to want your partner to do something for you that they can't do yeah that only the lord can do you know so you don't get value from having a, a marriage partner yeah but i suppose you get a certain amount you know to, to be fair you, you do get a certain amount but it doesn't it doesn't satisfy the need for value yeah marriage doesn't fully satisfy the loneliness issue um because only the lord does that mm. so so yeah and and then after that you know i, I know i'm moving on fairly fast here fire away there it's all good that's yeah um after that i would say between if if you date somebody mm. and it doesn't work out you know it's, it's a bit of a knockback yeah, and you may have to deal with the loneliness and deal with the value issue again before right. the Lord, and, and and keep building yourself up. Yeah, if that happens, um, what you want to do is you want to leave a little time before moving on to the next person. Yeah, because you you need to get back to the right place again. Uh, you also need to give dignity to the next person that you date. That's right. That they are not just a. a reaction to the last one and 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 that this is not an act of desperation it, it gives yeah. them dignity so so you give a little time so so each each date and experience i suppose each each person is prayed through you yeah. know you, you prayerfully approach it you you, you give each um date interaction it, it's dignity yeah. And it's time, it's prayer, it's attention. You give a little time then before you, you explore that with somebody else. Yeah. I think that's important. Sure. And then after that, I would say, is is trying to be the right person. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's that's really important. Really important. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a lot to that yeah. that we could talk about. Yeah. I love there's two things you touched on and not to discredit anything else, but there, there's there's something you mentioned there about being desperate and knowing your worth. And that really stems back to your relationship with Christ about from operating from a place of knowing your worth, your acceptance, your belonging to Christ. And when you operate from that place, I find that your dating experience, or even when you go on a date, you're not going there to win someone's acceptance or, or a value or anything like that. You, but it's you really enter it from a place of rest, yeah. You know, and there's That's not right. so much because well, oftentimes you put unrealistic pressure and expectations on yourself rather than as you, uh, there's something you said to me, and I'll never forget it for as long as I live. I was preparing one Friday for you, and you came into the office and you said you prepare in faith, you speak in faith, and you leave it in the hands of God by faith. And that's the same when it comes to approaching that date. Your Lord, I'm putting this in your hands. This girl or this guy is terrific. I look forward to getting to know him. And then when you close that prayer, you, you take a step of faith to walk to the coffee shop or the bowling alley or the park or wherever it is you've planned and the conversations in faith. And then at the end of it, you, Lord, thank you for today. And if it's an open door, I pray you would swing the door wide open that the hinges would come off. But if not, would the door gently close and would there be no hardness in my heart towards that person? Do you know, yeah. in in that way, it's honoring God, right? Because I think it's important yeah. that you honor the Lord in the dating process. And there's different ways to do that, but I think that's an example of how to do it in some sense. That's brilliant, Jerry. It's brilliant, and and what that what that brings into the the date, yeah, the actual the actual cup of coffee is is a relaxation and and a rest that I am not trying to perform in such a way to win this person. Yeah, you know what I'm doing is I'm walking by faith 
And this is an honest exploration of friendship yeah. and compatibility and a future together and, That's right. and just getting to know the person rather than trying to put on some persona or some some way of trying to grab this person or win yeah. this person. Yeah. You know, it's different. It's different, you know, um, there's a peace and a rest in it and it's a walk of faith yeah. and, and the Lord's involved. Yeah. You know, so That's and, right. and he's helping you. Yeah. yeah. And even I suppose there's there's something I had a conversation with Danny uh, probably about a year or two ago, and he was he was encouraging me in this area particularly. And he said to me it was like before he met Aoife, they were serving in young adults ministry, you know, and they were helping each other. They were very good friends, legit friend. Didn't look at each other in that way at all. He said it was almost like he was blind to seeing her in that way until the Lord revealed it opened his eyes to him her and her to him and then they just looked at each other in a different way and they liked each other they went on a few dates and after a period of time they entered into what we call the engagement um period and it's quite an important um stage pastor steve wouldn't you agree you know yeah. you go it's before you make that big step into a marriage and i suppose in our church um you do the pre-marriage counseling and for some people they may have never heard of pre-marriage counseling what do you mean I'm, i just put a ring on our finger i show up on the wedding day and we get married but i haven't been married yet clearly but for many interactions i've had with pastor patrick danny Nathan or any of the guys who are dear friends of mine who have got went through the pre-marriage course they have said it has been in in, a, in some sense a lifeline of helping to prepare them as they step into that chapter and I suppose I wanted to ask you we be, we, we believe it's important and yeah. I suppose in a practical sense why is it important what does it look like um yeah yeah well um romance is you know in a Obviously, in the time of engagement, you're you're in the throes of romance, and romance is is like a psychological illness. Mm. You know what it what it does it it completely uh, skews and warps your your vision of reality. You know yeah. that your your vision of your partner, probably your vision of yourself, your vision of your future together. Everything is rosy. Everything yeah. is wonderful. And there's no faults in anybody, <laughs> and so so you need some help, yeah, to ask the right questions so that you're prepared for the future. So so you can go right into marriage, and what's going to happen is you're going to hit those. W w w you can go in without having the pre-marriage course, sure. and you're going to you're going to hit the same issues as a couple who has a pre-marriage course, but. The pre the pre marriage course couple has been prepared. They've already asked the questions, yeah, asked the right questions, and um, they've already made decisions as to how they're going to handle certain things. And th there are big questions that you need to ask at this time, you know. Yeah. So, so I, as you're getting ready to get married, um, you you need it. You the biggest one is: Are you going to go? with a biblical model of, of marriage mm. or are you going to use some other model? Um, so, you know, we, we could talk a lot about that, you know, but the, the way that you make decisions, um, you know, that's, there's a, there's a biblical approach to that, yeah. you know, just as Christians, there's a biblical approach, uh, but also as husband and wife, there, yeah. there is a way of approaching decisions how, how you how you also are going to deal with finances um, your approach to children um, how you're going to communicate yeah you know these these are these are all things that um, that that can become very difficult if you just sure. hit them without having uh, discussed them Um how you're going to satisfy each other's needs, mm. you know, um, you know, emotionally and yeah. uh, like men, men, like it, the Bible talks about um, husbands love your wives, and it's yeah. it's it's for a very very good reason. It's yeah. because uh, women, you know, generally have this need 
yeah. to be loved and mm. what does that mean what what is love yeah. you know how is that expressed how how is is it just a set of words you know sure. what is it you know what does it look like you know what what's it going to cost yeah. you know am I, am I prepared for the cost as a man of of um, making sure that my wife is loved and what I what I said to couples is uh, or husbands potential husbands is that it's not just about you loving your wife it's about your wife feeling loved yeah and if she's not feeling the love then no matter what you're well whatever you're doing is a waste of time well in a sense yeah. because if she's not if she's not getting if if she's not getting the love into her heart that that she needs, then whatever you're doing, you may as well give it up and you need to go back to the drawing board and, yeah. and start again. So we, we talk a lot about how how um how love is expressed and then for the man, we us guys, we need respect. Yeah. If you know, that's what the Bible says, why respect your husband and it's something sure. that, that we need. Yeah. And um, so we, we we go into depth on on these things, but um, yeah. So th- th- these are great questions that, yeah. that have have to be dealt with. What about dealing with parents? Mm. You know, how, how do we deal with parents? Yeah. Well, what about our ministry life in the yeah. future? Um, finances. How do we order our finances that that makes sense? That it's wise. That um, is God honoring. Yeah. That um, also allows us some freedom, you yeah. know, even with the responsibilities of marriage. So there's a lot of great conversations, and and uh, if you don't have uh, have some idea of what you're going to do with a lot of those topics, they're going to trip you up, and yeah. um, it can make that that start to marriage a little bit rocky. Yeah. Yeah. It it seems it's just from what I'm hearing, and I, I, I as a single guy, I'm enjoying just hearing you talk about. It. I really am because it's it's so practical. Like it's practical wisdom, really, in yeah. a lot of ways. The pre marriage course, and you know, because everyone talks about the honeymoon period, you know, where everything is going fine for the first two or three months, and then when the road gets bumpy, and as you said, you start to clash on things. But if you if you've gone through the pre marriage counseling, it's really a grace from God that actually helps you to embrace the trials and the tribulations of married life and just life in general, because two are better than one when two are walking the journey together rather than one, do you know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it seems quite incredible to know that for those who have gone through it, it's, it's really just given them a great setup in a sense to life or preparation for the lack of a better word, do you know, to go into married life, you know? Well, one of, one of the things that, that, actually sets a lot of expectations within us. One of the things that, that sets the expectations is our home life. Yeah. And and so I would explore that a little bit in the pre-marriage course. Sure. What way did your mother and father interact? How did they deal with finance? How did they uh, bring up the children? You know, how did they... Uh, deal with with fallouts, you yeah. know, the, you know, and because that sets that sets without well, even realizing it, that sets a lot of your expectations for your own marriage. Yeah, and then you you go in, you go in with those that set of expectations. Your partner comes in with a completely different set of expectations. Sure, and 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 you've you've got difficulty. You know, so it's really important to explore that. What are my expectations for me in marriage and for my partner in yeah. marriage? Yeah. And um, and are are those fair? Are those right? You know, yeah. and it's a great discussion, and, yeah. and it actually is a lot of fun. You know, th- right. this is this is what I find is that, is that you know as we explore um, the different topics. Everybody loves us. Everybody really enjoys the pre-marriage yeah. course. That, that so far, anyway, yeah, you know, and I always enjoy it as well mm-hmm. because you, you start. Well, what is a man? You know what, and what's the difference between men and women? God, God has made us male and female. Yeah. Is there more to that than just our physical frame? Sure. You know, is is there? 
linens and giftings and 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 makeup, you know that that um, you know just can affect things mm. in the future. And, and you know how do we uh, bring that all into our marriage and make that um, make that part of the strength of our marriage rather yeah. than than difficulty yeah. in the marriage, which it can be. Sure. Um, so. Yeah, it's it, you know it's 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 well worth doing, and and I actually I actually wouldn't marry a couple unless they've have they've had the pre marriage course. Yeah, not not necessarily by me, but but sure. by somebody that yeah. they've they've given it that consideration, that preparation. Yeah, well, and so Pastor Steve, you're a you're a solemnizer, you know, a, a registered yeah. solemnizer, which means that you get to marry people, and not that I'm please don't take this the wrong way, but I've been to. Fletcher and Goshi's wedding, Nathaniel and Joanne, Danny and Aoife, Patrick and Laura, been graced with a load of weddings, which I, I love weddings personally myself. I'm one of those weird people. But I always yeah. I always can say that there is a, an incredible joy on your face when I get to see you doing marriages. It seems like it's 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 incredible to watch, in fact, you know, because I've been to marriages where for lack of a better term, the priest or that is just like, you know, doing their thing and people yeah. get married. But you really take a joy. There's such a, a deep level of consideration to the structure of the ceremony, the vows that are being exchanged, the different components. And I can honestly say that I marvel at seeing how someone really enjoys weddings, you know. And I suppose I wanted to ask you, what is it like for you as a minister, pastor, solemnizer, whatever word you would use in that context, to prepare for a wedding, to carry out a wedding? Yeah, um, you're right, Jerry. I I love weddings. Yeah. Uh, I love conducting weddings. Mm. I love preparing couples to, to get married. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some some of the things we have to do as ministers isn't isn't as joyful. Sometimes sure. you're 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 cleaning up messes. Yeah. You know, you're you're trying to help people through real difficulties and and um you know, but. But weddings and marriages are something that there, there's a couple of reasons. I, I I think I always see something of the reflection of Christ in the church, you yeah. know, and in a wedding, and I really enjoy that. I, I love I love that Christ loves his bride. Yeah, Jesus loves us, and and you know we can be secure in that love and and marriage. And and the fact that that marriage is is more than just a feeling. It's it's a contract. It's a covenant. It's yeah. it's it's deep. It's real. It goes it goes it goes very deep. Mm. And um, yeah, so I I you're right. I, I enjoy it all. Um, and I think I I think God loves marriage. Yeah. I I think that. I always feel the blessing of God upon it. You know, I yeah. think, you know, where, where it says in the, in the Bible that marriage should be honored by all. I think that God more than anyone honors marriage. Yeah. And he comes and he honors the decision of this man and this woman to be joined together yeah. in, in covenant um, before God. Uh, he honors that. Yeah. Even even if maybe a couple could have made a better decision, I think mm. God still honors that. Yeah. And he comes and he blesses that that union. And so I always feel the blessing of God. Yeah. And it, you know, and I feel a joy in it because I I know what marriage did for me. Yeah. Um and like it was it was one of the greatest decisions of my life and um one of the greatest decisions of Roman's life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was a great decision, and it's so many blessings. Yeah. You know, the, the company, you know, the the fun. Yeah, you know, having family. You know, just being around the table together. Yeah, um, enjoying time together. You know, going through things together. I, I you know, the 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 joy of shared experiences. Mm. You know, just sharing that that bit of laughter, that that game, that that holiday experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
I, yeah, I, I love fishing. I, you know, you know that about me. I love fishing yeah. and doing things like that. It's the one thing Wilma won't come with me for is <laughs> is out in the boat for fishing, and I just want her to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I, yeah, I. I yeah, there's so many sides to marriage. I think yeah. dealing with the loneliness, you know, for, for me, it was God's way of of dealing with my loneliness, yeah. and um, you know, and, and it was also God's way of dealing with my character. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> marriage exposes some things, Jerry. Yeah, you know, and and, and me, it exposed. It exposed selfishness, maybe not a selfishness with possessions, but a selfishness of I want a particular outcome, and that's what I want, and that that's the way I want it to be. And yeah. um, I had to, I had to, I learned. I, I never thought I was selfish. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I was generous and easygoing, <laughs> and and. and and marriage just brought that to the surface. No, there is a selfish side to me, and, and, and many yeah. other things too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, so, then, so I rejoice with couples, yeah, because yeah. because I, I realize what they're they're stepping into. Sorry. No, oh, you're okay. Totally fine. Uh, I suppose then, because obviously we 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 know that marriage is two becoming one, and yeah. I suppose it's a loaded question to ask what's married life like? And yes, I, I get that that can be either a simple or a very difficult question, but was, I suppose, for yourself or just in general, um, I think the, the pre-marriage counselling would be a grace in the sense that it helps people to navigate to becoming one because it's not my money, it's our money. It's not no longer yeah. my time, it's our time. Do you know, yeah. so I suppose, has that been a, a grace or a blessing to you in your life in the sense of, it's you get to spend time with your wife in ministry and experiencing your family go through school and college and you know your your kids essentially growing up that's got to be i suppose in a way not even a reward i think that's the wrong word to use but definitely a blessing to see together yeah yeah it's it's very fulfilling jerry it's yeah. very fulfilling um and what i would say to you because I before I got married, I remember thinking, I wonder what it's like. Yeah. You know, and this is gonna be really awkward, you know, mm. if you know, in, in certain ways I thought it's it's gonna be really uh really difficult to to reorganize everything and, and, yeah. and how I live and, and and how she lives. It this is this is gonna be challenging. Yeah. But um for us and I think for most couples, it, it becomes it actually is very, very natural, mm. very, very quickly. Wow! And 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 you really get to see so quickly that that this is God's plan, and this is just so right. Yeah. And this the 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 new normal is normal so quickly, mm. you know, and um, and it's just so blessed. Yeah. You know, so it's it's just the right, um. But, you know, obviously, you have to have the right person in the right time. But when when you got that, um, and and you know, it is it is just so good, and you just fall into, um, f you fall into lovely moments, and uh, you you have the the journey is just so good so quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I I just encourage all those who are, who are approaching it. It's it's worth it. You know, and it's. It's it's something to pursue and to pray into, yeah. and it is worth putting the right approach into it in every yeah. step of the way. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think we, we we had a little chat before we started. It is one of the biggest decisions in life, one of the most important decisions yeah. in life. It it this decision of of marriage. Um, has the potential to to actually destroy your life, yeah. you know. If yeah. if you approach it wrong and, and marry the wrong person, it's it can it can be a lot of pain, a yeah. lot of pain. So it, it needs to be prepared for right and approached right, and yeah. bring in bring it bring in your pastors. You know, if you've got good pastors in it, bring them into it. Bring yeah. bring in good solid friends. 
yeah. um, you know, in, in every step of the process, even to the, even to the point, this, this is what I'd say to, to people who are just wanting to get to start dating, they feel that it's, it's that stage of their life, is take a little bit of consultation on the old haircut, mm. you know, on the old dress sense, you know, the be- beard or not beard, you know, whatever. Yeah. You, know, yeah, yeah. you know, bring people in, even at that level. It's not that appearance is everything, but it's part of it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're yeah. a whole person, you know. That's right. Um, be, be, be hygienic, you know, yeah. shower every so often. <laughs> so often, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I love the fact that you touched on that, Pastor Steve, because it was actually, I I suppose, on my mind, um, the importance of inviting your pastors into it, because I'm so thankful, and I know this may not be the case for everyone, but I I definitely have a close relationship with my pastors, with you, Pastor Nick, Pastor Patrick, Pastor Hamp, to the point where, like, I mean, I don't mind saying this, I mean, me and you had that conversation after church, that Wednesday service, several months ago, and I was very real with you, and you encouraged me, and you prayed with me on the spot, because for me, I suppose when I first became a Christian, the, one of the biggest things I wrestled with was like, your pastors have authority and inviting them into your life. I'm like, no, they're not. I'm just going to show up in church on Sunday, let them preach a message and I'm going to go home. But I'm so thankful that the longer I journey with Jesus, I see that you are my shepherds, my pastors, the grace of God being extended in my life. And, and I, I love the fact that I get to invite you into that. Like to be very real, I asked you recently enough, would you pray? I was going on a date why not because i needed you to affirm the fact that i was going on a date but that i could get my pastor's blessing and support and even for them to pray with me it was a dear encouragement to me and i'm so thankful you brought that up because a lot of people can be afraid of that because they they, they think the pastor may shoot down no don't go on that day or such and such but i'm so thankful for the fact that i have people like you pastor nick pastor patrick pastor ham that i can literally say please pray i'm going on a date tomorrow because i know you will do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think to have godly pastors, godly leaders, yeah. um, ministry leaders, or or youth pastors, or uh, college age pastors, that to, to um to have those people that they're actually they're actually treasure. Mm. You know, if you That's if right. you have somebody who genuinely loves the Lord, genuinely loves you. Yeah. Um, and has a little bit of experience, then, then that is gold. Yeah. That is gold. If they have yeah. a little bit of experience, obviously in the things of God and and, and what's right, um, you know, it's gold and it's worth listening. And um, don't don't discount that. You know, bring that. I, I would encourage people bring that into your life. Yeah, that's right. I love what we we've we've covered a lot. And I, I think it's it's it was so needed to be covered in, in all the stages that we've covered, dating, engagement, and marriage. And I suppose the appropriate way to close out the podcast episode would be to pray to, to everything that we've spoken about, to give it over to the Lord and for, the, for our listeners that this would be a grace to them and that they would have received the wisdom from God ultimately, that the Holy Spirit would cement what was spoken today into their hearts so that they can navigate through this awkward or easy season of life that they're in. Do you know, yeah. and Pastor Steve, could I kindly ask for you to pray as a way to close out the episode? Sure. Sure. Awesome. Love to. Lord God, Lord God, we, we Lord, come to you, O oh God. And I thank you, O oh God, that, that you're not just the God of the Sunday service, Lord. Yeah. Not just the God of the Sunday sermon, Lord, but, but you are... Lord, walking with us, Lord, through life, oh God. And Lord, you're with us, Lord, every step of the way, oh God. And your plans are good plans, oh God. And oh Lord, when we, Lord, have talked about marriage tonight, oh God, our, Lord, our hearts rejoice, Lord. It's such yes. your plans are good, oh God. And, and mm-hmm. your your plans for uh, how a man and woman are to, to come together, Lord, and, and marriage and procreate, oh God. All mm-hmm. of that. Lord, we see that. Lord, you created it in the Garden of Eden. Lord, you looked on it and you said it was good, Lord. And and Lord, we agree, Lord. It's good, Lord. We love it, oh God. We love yeah. your plans, oh God, in your ways, Jesus. And Lord, tonight, Lord, I pray for those, Lord, who are, oh Lord, maybe a little too early, Lord, to start dating. Oh God, mm. but Lord, they, they, they want to approach this right. Oh God, I pray, Lord, you bless them, Lord. Help them, Lord, to yes. wait 
until the right time, Lord. Help them now, Lord, to be preparing, oh God, in their, Lord, even their careers, oh God, their jobs, Lord, so that they can uh, be, be ready for a future home, mm-hmm. oh God. Uh, Lord, help them as to prepare spiritually, Lord, to be, oh Lord, Lord, the right husband, the right wife, oh God, that, oh Lord, they're following you, they're grown in faith in you, Jesus. Lord, they're grown, Lord, in their, Lord, ability, Lord, to, to get their value from you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, to, to get their self-esteem, Lord, Lord, from walking with you, Jesus. Lord, from, Lord, to, to, the esteem that you give us, oh, God. You died on the cross for us, oh, God. Oh, Lord, and, and I pray for those, Lord, who are who have started dating, Lord, who are, oh, Lord, trying to figure out if they're dating the right person. Oh, God, bless them, Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray, God, that they would have, Lord, discernment, oh, God. And, oh, Lord, they would not, Lord, Lord, date for, for uh, Lord, because of insecurity, oh, God. But they mm. would date, Lord, out of faith, Jesus. Out of out of a faith journey, Lord, that, uh, Lord, you're leading them, Lord, Lord, to the right person, oh, God. And, yeah. uh, Lord, you're, you're building something, oh, God. I, I, I pray, Jesus, Lord, bless those people, Lord. Lord, who are in dating relationships. Bless those, Lord, who are, Lord, Lord, engaged now, O oh God. And Amen. Lord, uh, I pray, O oh God, you bring them, Lord, to a great pre marriage course, O oh God, where, yes. O oh Lord, they can, Lord, explore, Lord, Lord, these important questions, O oh God, that, that need to be talked through, O oh God, O oh Lord, before putting on the ring, O oh God. And, mm. oh Lord, I pray for those who, are, who have just got married, O oh God, as well, Jesus, Lord, and those who are, Lord, uh, stepping out into married life. Lord, bless them, Jesus, Lord. And, yes. Lord, Lord, it can be challenging, O oh God. And, Oh Lord, it takes a little while, Lord, to Lord to just settle into the the right patterns, oh God, and to find the right patterns, oh God. And Lord, I pray for them, Jesus. Lord, bless them, God. And Amen. oh Lord, thank you, Lord, for this conversation. Thank you, Lord, for for Brother Jerry, oh God, and just thank you, oh God, for the gifts you've given him, oh God. And oh Lord, how Lord he is, Lord, 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 going into great topics like this, oh God, just to be a benefit to others, oh God. I pray, Lord, you bless this ministry, oh God, and bless Jerry, oh God, and, and bless all of the things, Lord, that you've put in front of him to do, yeah. and, and bless him, oh God, in his journey, oh God, Lord, through life, oh God, and, and his career, Lord, and oh Lord, all, all, the, all the things that you have, Lord, for him, Lord, bless him, Jesus, Lord, and thank you for these moments, oh God, mm. oh Lord, and thank you for your presence with us, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor Stephen, thank you so much. I mean, I'm 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 listening to this episode as we were talking and I was really enjoying it. Do you know, it's amazing how something like something so important can be something so enjoyable and yet you can receive so much. And I believe that for myself as I listen back to this, that this, this would be a grace to me as well, as I've already received it, you know. And I want to thank you so much for just being so willing. I really, really, really appreciate you giving up of your time. Uh, it's my pleasure, Jerry. It's my pleasure. As I, as I said, I love this topic, and I love to see people successful yeah. in it. There, there's something about just a great marriage That's and right. a great home and, and the fruit of that. So um, thank you for, for bringing up this topic, and thank you for allowing me to speak. And it's just been a, a, an absolute pleasure, as always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Steve. And guys, for those of you that have tuned in, whether you're watching this or listening to this, thank you. I trust that you have taken many notes. If this has been a blessing to you, do me one favor. Hit the like, share, and subscribe, but also send it to a friend, a colleague, a family member, a neighbor. If this has been a help to you, why not be a help to someone else by sending it on to them and, and see how God will use this episode to be an impact in other people's lives. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember that hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. Take care.